I, I need to tell you, I haven't the foggiest where I'm going uh, this, this period. And it's got nothing to do with not working and preparing. Um, I've been working on it. It just, it's a difficulty for me. I think, I, I think it's also a difficulty for most who uh, minister. I, I, maybe that's not right, but I think so. Um, a, a major question is, uh, what do I say uh, to these people, whoever they are, that have come to listen? What does one speak to them? And because everybody is built differently, their life situation and all of that is, is uh, all different. Uh, it's, it, I don't think it's easy to, well, I'm not even sure if it's possible to be able to know what to say. But I noticed in prayer uh, that, that our brother led, I would just as soon as he had kept praying as um, my preaching here, it was very rich, had to do with all of the things that fundamentally are um, important to us. But um, I, I had thought I was gonna speak about prayer, uh, particularly the Lord's Prayer, but I changed my mind uh, through that halfway through uh, the week and, and the reasons don't matter, but it, it was a change. Um, I, I'll struggle on here uh, in a moment or two. Uh, having uh, said this, I can't see anybody, but uh, I only see two faces and I'm afraid to touch anything in case I knock it all off. I'd be happy if I could see everybody, but I don't know how to do that. And I'm afraid of hitting something that means uh, that it's, it's, it's gone, that our connection is gone. Um, so, so whoever you are, uh, God bless you uh, for, for being with us. Uh, I, I thought that perhaps, uh, um, I don't know how I got all of this, but I thought perhaps there might be a decision made this evening uh, or, or shortly later, a little while later, that this Thursday uh, gathering would cease. Uh, and, and then I heard uh, Kevin say something and indicate that's not true. It, it, is there any reason to think that Thursday is going to end? No, not going to end. Okay. All right. And you can come and speak anytime you are enabled to do so. Anytime. It's open. Okay. Well, that's, that's very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, here. Um, yeah. What? There's there's something about preaching. Uh, preaching. I'm not going to go on and on about this particular thing, but I need to say it um, uh, to, to get where I'm going. And I hope where I'm going, uh, I, I finally get there, and you'll know where I've been. But um, to say the same things over and over and over. And over again at the same level, with the same uh, scriptures that uh, that are are there, is a bit is a bit like trying to prove again what nobody in the building would ever dream of disputing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I heard a man, it doesn't matter, I, 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 this is going to sound critical at these points, and uh, I've been uh, urged to uh, hold my speech and not to be so critical. Um, but uh, I heard a man uh, speak to a, a very large group, he, no doubt a man of God, one who loves God and all of that, loved God as well as I've ever loved them and probably more. But in his speech, he felt that necessary, 
to prove to this massive crime to, of people who every year travel you know, all over the place at their own expense and all of that and listen for uh, God's word. He, he felt it was necessary to prove again that the tomb was empty. And he felt in the course of it to tell us, I was one of the, the, the hearers, to tell us what the critics of God and the gospel, what their arguments were and why their arguments didn't work. And then went through and got, you know, 15 or 20 scriptures that, you know, said that the tomb was empty. All of that, I'm, I'm saying that to, to minister the gospel, it, it's not an easy job. Not for those who take it seriously. And I, most, of the, most of the ministers I've ever known uh, took seriously uh, what it is that uh, they were into. They saw themselves uh, called of God, and God said to them, essentially, I have a job for you. I want you to spend your time uh, preparing and listening to me and all of that and speaking uh, the truth uh, about me and, and my purposes uh, to those that listen. Um, most, of, most of the fellows that I ever got to know were took that seriously, and that's right. Uh, so what I have to say is not uh, one of those beating jobs on, on, on ministers. I'm not either in the mood for it. Um, I, am at, I am sometimes, and I have been over the years, angry uh, with not only what I heard, but how it went about it. And uh, my daughter, Linda, who's very good at it, very good to me, uh, would, would uh, tell me uh, when I asked her one day, she hadn't said anything when we were driving home from the building. And I knew because she was very quiet, I said, there was something wrong there. And I said, well, what do you have to say? And all she said was, um, I, uh, I, I, I've forgotten the words. Uh, I, I don't know if you know I'm having some difficulty with this. So if I lose the words once more, it's not. I, I worked on it. I just can't remember. Uh, she said, uh, I thought it was, uh, and she used a word beyond harsh. She said, I thought it was brutal, something like that. And, and, and she was right. I'm trying to get out of that, and uh, I think for the most part, maybe uh, I'm out of it. I don't know why I'm telling you all this. I, I think I'm sort of trying to find it. Where am I going? All right, but, oh, I know where I started. Ministering the word, saying the same thing over and over and over again with the same text, the same group of text at the same level is unfair to the people who have come great distances and, and have made themselves uh, regularly uh, present. Uh, it's unfair to them to be giving them uh, the, the same thing over and over and over again. That, that's number one. And it's like, it's like here's, uh, here's the fireplace. It's, it's bitter cold. Uh, 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 and here's the fireplace and it's, um, um, uh, it's it's filled with 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 uh, uh, with with, uh, with uh, wood and, and and the like that uh, you know you, you need it and then to come to that with a bucket full more of of really good uh, fiber and, and that and pour it up and fill the whole area uh, with, with good uh, funds, uh, not funds, whatever it is, you know what it is, for burning. But there's not any light. There's not any fire. There's not everything that burns. 
is not everything that sets the place going. Mm. To minister the word, saying the same things without any heat or fire, um, exhilaration, and nothing that inspires and all of that, and the people hearing the same things, hearing the same truths, but it not being truths that enable uh, people. It's not enough to get truth. It's necessary to get truth that is invigorating, that are helping people uh, to become excited, to become assured, become a this, that, and the other, so that when they have occasion to speak, to children, their own children, to somebody else, to friends and that, that they can speak with more than truth, you know. I'm not sure if that went well, but uh, maybe you got the direction. Finally, uh, on that, on this area, here's this. I mentioned uh, some time ago, I know I mentioned maybe a couple of years ago, but um, Here's um, here's a fellow who spent eight or nine or ten years. He's become uh, a surgeon, and he's a surgeon of what you do for legs and and, and feet and all that. I, I I don't remember the word for it. You know it, but here he is. He's absolutely uh, the outstanding fellow with all the knowledge and uh, that kind of thing. And uh, you, you have an accident. Uh, you you have one of those one of those uh, you smash your leg and the bone comes out. I can't remember what, what that kind of thing that is, but you know what it is. Here, your your bone sticking out of the flesh. You're bleeding and all of that. The pain is is awful. No, 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 no. And this very famous this this equipment with the, all the information uh, arrives. And he begins to lecture. He begins to lecture on the nature of blood, uh, the nature of bones, uh, skin, and and how this works and that works and the other uh, works. And while he's lecturing, you are, are, are driven wild with the pain and the worry. Your family's all concerned, but he's lecturing and he's telling truth in all of that. To be a, a minister of the gospel in that area, if, if you were with someone like that, uh, and I've come across, uh, forgive me, I, I, I need to, to say that. Uh, I've come across a number down the years where that's precisely what was happening in the middle of uh, places where people were hurting uh, and about people our brother uh, spoke about in the prayer, non-Christian people, but not all serious enemies of God or anything like that, but like many, many, many people that come out of uh, Egypt and followed Israel and honored God and became a part of that arrangement, though they couldn't be the chosen people, they were regarded as they must be treated as if they were that, just because they were not part of the, the, the Israelite uh, structure, they were not part of the chosen group, they honored God. They stood by the kinds of things that God stood by. And God said, you will not mistreat them. And, and on and on, there are a number of laws laid out where you cannot do that. And it seems to me that, and this is coming out because of our brother's prayer, we wouldn't be having this thing tonight if there weren't people and there are thousands that we know nothing about who haven't done wondrous things for the service of God. Things uh, that though they weren't Christians, they were honoring God. And I do know, and I, I can think of one right this minute 
blistering everyone like it who's not a Christian and, and banging away at them as if it were not possible. Not yet to be a Christian without being honored by God. You would think there was no Bible. When we read uh, the, 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 the man uh, who, whose name's away from me, um, uh, God sees him and uh, God uh, speaks of him uh, and sends a message to Peter. Uh, about him. This, this man honored God. He prayed to God. He did all these things, but he wasn't a Christian, don't you? Corne say? Cornelius. Cornelius, thank you. Cornelius was this kind of man. And then there was another uh, girl who became a Christian, Jewish background, apparently. But Lydia. Who? Lydia. 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 He's up with all the answers. I'm, I'm a bit sickened by him getting all the answers on right here. I wish I could. Uh, that was a joke. That was a joke. Um, she, uh, well, here's what, what, what the story is. She said, if you now judge me to be faithful, she's baptized into Christ the man. She said, if you now judge me to be faithful, this, this, and this. It is certainly possible. Biblical witness declares it that non-Christian people can be as upright and fine and honoring God without being a Christian. They haven't heard. They don't know that, that their life situation is in the way of all of that. They are hurting sore. They hear the gospel. But the gospel can't get to them. As we're told in the Old Testament, when Moses comes and he says to the captives of Israel who were going through that period, going through a really, really bad time, he tells them, uh, I've met up with God, Yahweh. He has sent me to tell you that he was gonna, he's going to deliver you and all of that. And the scripture says they could not believe because of the anguish that they were going through. And, but God kept pursuing him. But in the meantime, what kept them from believing was not a choice issue. And Christians don't wrestle against men and women, flesh and blood but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. And they're not the only ones who do that. There are people, non-Christian people in the billions who are wrestling against, but they don't know what it is that they're wrestling against. They don't know um, that it's principalities and powers that are enemies of God that is taking a hold of them and turning them into something evil and brutal and slimy and the rest of it, making them like themselves. And they don't even have the gospel sounded to them. They don't even have Christian friends who are sustaining them. But, uh, but we're tempted if we don't, we don't hear God in Scripture. We're tempted to think that they're not Christians. That's the end of it. And uh, um, they're, they're lost already, you know. And so, you know, they're lost. And it's not the bad stuff that's being poured on them that's making them lost. They're already lost because they were sinners, which is true, of course. They weren't sinners the way you are, the way I was, the way we are even. But certainly before we became to Christ, God came after us and protected us and worked at us through fathers, mothers, friends, Sunday school teachers, and all of that, and drew us into himself. And so he did that because though we were sinners at that time and cared nothing much about him, very possibly cared little or none about him. But that didn't alter his intention for us. So knowing he wants us saved, he came after us in all the ways, and he's doing the very same thing for non-Christian people. And to speak 
brutally about such people is unlike the Christ. What, what am I going to make of? What should I make of this? That the most violent enemies of Jesus Christ, the most wicked, uh, sly, lying, and vicious enemies of the Lord Jesus Christ were church-going, hymn-singing, money-giving, yeah, upright, characteristically morally upright people. These joining in with, with governments and military powers and all of that, where they were the number one chief enemy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Church going, hymn singing, Bible reading, sermon preaching, decent, morally upright men, and, and perhaps women, but certainly the men of the structures. Yeah. You know that Jesus Christ uh, if, if you know this is not true, you'll correct me. You'll drop me a note and say, no, there, there's a text that supports the other. You know, I, don't, I know of no scripture where Jesus spoke to a woman blatantly and hard. I don't know of one. Maybe there is one. I don't know of any one. I know this, that I know of no, no text where Jesus came after one of the rank and file oppressed uh, people, not part of the, the institution, where he scalded them. I know nothing of that about Jesus Christ. But I know he did it with church going, hymn singing, Bible reading, preaching sermons and the like, and decently upright people. The most severe piece of New Testament scripture I know, and it might be the most severe of the, the biblical witness, even though I know some very serious, hard speeches by God in the Old Testament. It's um, it's Matthew. Is it Matthew? I think it's Matthew. It's Matthew, Matthew. 20, Matthew 23, all the way down. Thank you. All the way down. Thank you. Christ called him everything but good. He said, son of the devil, how can you? And on and on and on. Take a look at 23. And that was religious people, religious to the core, Bible readers. He said, you never, you never go from scripture. You're always reading it. You know all about it. You read it all, but you have enough foggiest what it's about. They know the languages. They were no doubt trilingual. They were uh, Hebrew. They would have been uh, the other, you know, the others. Um, you know all of that, but you don't know what it's about. All the scholars and all of that that they were. He said, scholars are not, never read of the Bible or not. And you don't know. They're talking about me. You think you've got life because of all of that? You don't. Okay. I'm, I'm moving to another uh, issue. Uh, I, I, I'm not feeling angry. Uh, do you hear me? If, if I'm getting loud and not, I'm not angry. I don't feel angry. Okay. Just so you, you, you uh, forgive me if I'm, if I'm not. No. The book of Genesis, chapter one, God said, let us make man in our own image. And the image of God made he, uh, him, male and female created he them. Uh, but, but prior to that, he said, let there be light. And there was light. And the scripture, this is, uh, I, I would read it, but my, my eyes and on my readings yet for, uh, he, uh, he, he said, let there be light. And there was light. And the scripture says this. And God saw it and saw that it was good. And then he sees the water, the seas that he made, and says, having made it, he says, and he saw that it was good. 
All I'm interested in at the moment, that's all I'm interested in is about seven times he says the, the, the light, the water, the, the trees, the this, that, and the other were good. All I want you to hear me say at this minute is this. The word good in all those sections is not talking about moral goodness. When he says the light is good, he's not saying it's moral. When he says the trees are good, he's not saying they're moral. When he's saying the fish are good, he's not saying they're moral. The word good there is not talking about morality. It's talking about a creator's assessment of what he just created. Like you, who build uh, 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 a shelf or, or, or something like that for a particular job, and you step back and you say, that's good. You're not talking morality, okay? This, this becomes important. The creator, the creator is the one who knows what good is. Not talking about morality, talking about the thing that is suited for his eternal purpose to work that out, okay? So he creates and he knows what is a good thing, the evil thing that he will talk about in other texts. Characteristically, evil mortality-wise, but repeatedly, repeatedly, the word evil is used as it would have been used if had he used it in the book of Genesis 1. God says, shall in the book of something, I can't remember. Um, he said that, that I know what it says. I don't know where they are, but I know what they say. Okay. He, he says uh, through the prophet, shall, shall evil befall a city and I not do it. He's talking about bringing judgment down on a nation. Amos 3. Amos huh? 3. Verse, Amos 3, brother. Thank you. I'm glad you're there. He said, he said, I, I did this. Or, 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 he, he, he'll either say later, or he says earlier, um, I sent uh, a, a lack of water. I sent this and that. And I sent disease and, and distress, all of that kind of thing. Evil is used. And then that text that he... Uh, he helped us with. Um, uh, he's saying, he's saying, I sent them, not the gods, not the gods. The nations thought our gods did it. He says, not the gods, I did. Yeah, that's what he said. Um, he said, I do these things, and he will tell the gods, do something, do anything, do something good, do something bad, that is evil, or, or, or create something, or destroy something. All of what I've now uh, said, I, I mean to make the point that it's about creation. Okay? God is the creator. Gods don't exist. They, they, they aren't. They don't exist. They don't do anything because they are not. They don't. They aren't or can't do anything. He treats the gods as the invention of humans, and the invention of the humans through the evil we introduced into the world, they became 
gods and they got names and all of that. And so all of that is going on. Now then, one more moment and I'm moving on to another text. When God said, I know good and evil, he's not talking about morality. He's talking about creation and what works well within my purpose to be who I am, a lover who's going to bless. He says, I know about what is opposed to that. Anything opposed to that, an evil structuring, it's not my work. I don't do that. And then we have the animal coming, as uh, the record has it. He comes and tells these two, you, um, you could be God. He's holding you back. You could be God. And you, if you take my advice, you will get to know good and evil. He's not talking about morality. He's saying you can be a creator. You can make. You can destroy. You, you can be God's equal. You will be able to create things that suit your purpose. Okay? Now, the New Testament, 1 Corinthians, I, I think it's 1 Corinthians 11. Uh, I, I, I think it's 1 Corinthians 11. Uh, it, it, oh, surely it's got to be. Um, or, uh, uh, well, well, um, I, I don't know what where the verse says. I'm I'm going to work with it, and then you 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 you'll you'll help me find. It. I'm sorry about this. I genuinely am. I perhaps should have told you. Uh, I, I couldn't, and I want to say I know that. But if you're willing to put up with it, I'm willing to. And it's embarrassing. Uh, no, I can't help it. Uh, uh, look, see, physically, I'm very healthy. Uh, you know, well, you know, for an old guy, I'm very healthy, so I don't need to be pitied or anything like that. I'm just having trouble doing what what I what I want to do. Okay, but Paul says, um, uh, 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 surely it's got to be First uh, Corinthians eleven. Uh, can I? Can I? Uh, let me let me see. Um, uh, Oh, yeah, it is. It's 1 Corinthians 11, 1 and following. Uh, but but if I, I won't be reading it. Uh, you, you'll read it for yourself. What I'm about to say is in there. You'll read it for yourself. 1 Corinthians 11. But before he writes, God, I mean, God, God's the talker. It's not Paul or any of the men. It's God speaking, and the Spirit of God gets them right that down. It's God's voice. In the Old Testament, as we've noted before, they always said that the, 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 the preachers and what, what they are, they're bigger than preachers. They say, thus saith the Lord. The Bible is God talking through his writing, okay? So in 1 Corinthians 7, God has Paul, has Paul speak. To the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 7, and he tells them how rich they are in all kinds of knowledge and all kinds of abilities that God has gifted them with. He said, you're loaded down. His phrase is, you come behind in nothing. They've got it all. You see? Yeah, but they loved it. They became enamored with this, that, and the other. And they competed with one another. Some like the tongues, and this is in other verses, but, but it's, it's all in the first Corinthian matter. They loved the tongue speaking. There's something about speaking a language you don't know 
but you know you're speaking a language you've never learned. But God has enabled you to speak miraculously. Even if you don't understand what you're saying, those who spoke in tongues did not know what they were saying. Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you all. This is not the big point I'm wanting to make, but I can't help it. It's, it's, what, what. He said, I speak in tongues more than you all, but I would rather speak five words in the assembly with my understanding than 10,000 words. 10,000, and I don't know. Uh, 10,000 words um, that I don't understand. I'd rather speak with, speak five words with my understanding. I would know what I was doing and aiming for and all the rest of it. I'd rather speak 5,000 words that I understood as 10,000 that I didn't. The tongue speaking, it was a big thing, and, and, and the Corinthians loved that kind. Then there were those who were, uh, 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 I was going to say atmospheres. I mean, a speaker is more than a preacher, whatever the word is for that. But they, they loved it. And, and they, would, they would try to hog the whole show. All of this is in First Corinthians. They were trying to hog it. He said, preacher, uh, uh, these, uh, not preachers, uh, you know, what was the word for a guy in the Old Testament who, who pre taught the word? Prophets. Of Prophets. A prophet. A prophet. He said, look, you prophets, speak. He said, but speak the revelation God has given you. And then shut up. And anyone who indicates that he's got a message from God, give him the opportunity to speak for God wouldn't give him. And the implication being God wouldn't give him the gift of that to uh, have him speak. Uh, if there wasn't something that needed to be in, you've got to stop. You've got your share of, of the teaching you know, prophetically and all of that. So they, 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 they had it one after another, and they were beating one another up. And they got to be, this is all in 1 Corinthians 13, and I say 13. It's all there. And there were those who became so well healed theologically that they knew the gods are nothing. Others who were part of that whole world system where you believe in the gods, they just couldn't get it. They heard the words all right, and the words, they, they, they liked the idea, but uh, they, they couldn't they couldn't turn loose. Paul speaks about it in four, uh, Romans 14. He speaks about it in 1 Corinthians chapters 8, all the way through, uh, I don't know, verse 11 uh, comes to mind in a minute. But the guys that got to know the gods were nothing. If the gods were nothing, you see all that meat that was sold from uh, from the the, 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 the the buildings, uh, the whatever the buildings are, where they worship, um, sold from their end of the butchers. And, and uh, the butchers would sell what was left over from the gods. And those who believed the gods were real and became Christians, they couldn't eat that meat because it was, it was from the gods and it would contaminate them. And for love of God, though they were ignorant, for Paul says, there aren't any gods, and if you eat the meat, doesn't do you any harm. If you don't eat it, it's 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 all the same. He tells them it's all right to eat the meat, uh, you know that kind of thing. And so, but Paul told them that, and that was uh, that was the truth. But they couldn't grasp the truth. It was too grind into them that gods were this, that, and the other. And the ones who already now knew. They were the big hitters, the people that knew the truths about all of this. What would they do? They would be invited to uh, uh, eat all that meat, and they would have 
a friend of theirs, a brother in their, uh, of theirs, uh, fellows they grew up with, you know, we're all God servants together. And they bring them into this uh, the deal and they all sit down to the meal. And the, the, the worried one, the one with, with troubles that, that Paul speaks about in Romans 14, they will say, uh, please, where, where, where was that bread bought? Or the, or that food bought? And they would say such and such. Oh, well, that's, that's from the gods. Yeah, and they can't eat it. And the people are mocking. And the those who knew would mock their brothers who couldn't handle it. And they would gorge away with the food. Paul says, what you should have done, you should have said, I can't eat uh, with my brother. I, he, he and I can't eat. What they could have done, and they might even have done, they might have explained to the, the, the people who was giving them the supper, well, of course I can eat it. Well, why is he over there not able to eat it? Well, he's an idiot. Yeah, he, he's ignorant. He, he doesn't know. They could have done that and humiliated him. Or they could have done just chum, chum. Paul said what God said, not Paul. God said what you should have done was join him who was weak and said, he and I can't, he and I can't eat. Uh, it's a conscience. It's a faith issue. And so what they did was they took the knowledge that they had and used it love less play and might even have destroyed the destroyed brothers, which is what Paul says in Romans chapter, uh, whatever chapter I was, I was saying, um, for, uh, whatever one it is, uh, where Paul says, uh, you, you're free to eat, he says to the eaters, but he's not. You know that he has the right to eat that. He doesn't know it. The reason he's giving it up it's because he's, he's wanting to honor God. He, he, he thinks to do that would, 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 would make God sad. And for you to, to make it hard on him, you might drive him to do things that he thinks are absolutely uh, contrary uh, to the will of God. You might destroy him and you might destroy the man for whom Christ died in order for you to exercise your wonder and your liberty and all of that kind of thing. You'd kill a brother for whom Christ died. The message is what then? The message is altogether what 1 Corinthians 11, uh, if, you, if you let me read out, I'm, I'm nearly done. I don't know how long I've got. I'll, I'll finish as soon as I come. Right? Um, and, and 1 Corinthians uh, in, in 1 Corinthians 11, now I praise you, brethren, that you remember uh, me in all things and keep the, uh, the, the ordinances uh, as I uh, reveal them to you. This is a courtesy remark. There's truth involved in it, but he's speaking larger than the truth. For you only have to read where he's already crawled all over them for ugliness, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, that kind of thing. But in general, in general, he can choose out people and say, you stood by and you did well with this, that, and the other. That's what he's just said here. And in 11, uh, 2, uh, now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me. Yes, verse 3, but this is 11, 3 of 1 Corinthians. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Uh, oh, dear. Oh, dear. Uh, I've, I've got the wrong text. I've got the wrong text. Here's what the right text uh, says. It says, um, if I, how when you find it, shut it out, please. Um, if I could answer all the questions that ever 
were asked if I had the wisdom to know how to react in all the sets of circumstances to, to, to get the end I'm looking for. 13, 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13. I'll, I'll read that if I can. All right. Um, yeah, if I speak in the tongues of men and angels have not love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have all prophetic powers and understand mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith as to remove mountains, and I have love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have and deliver my body to be burned and have not love, I gain nothing. I don't know. Thank you, my brother. Oh, uh, yeah, and then he says, if I bestowed all my goods, did you just read that there? Well, anyway, okay. If I give my body to be burned 13 half, last half, this, that, and the other, and when I don't have love, it profits me nothing. You know what he said here? He said, if I were equal to God, if I, if I, was what's the what's the word for knowing everything whatever it is if 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 i knew everything omniscient God, omniscient omniscient if i were omniscient he's he's saying if i claim to be god if i knew the answers to all the issues we're back in Genesis chapter one, three. Well, in one where God gives them the, the power and the creation, uh, I'm giving you the power to do this and, and, and take care of that and run that and all the other. And I have given you uh, so much ability and wisdom to grow things and develop it all. When the, 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 the evil one said, he says, He's, he's holding you back because he knows. He knows if you had all the knowledge, if you had all the, the knowledge, you could make things. You could be a, 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 an, an opponent of God. And I don't know only an opponent, just someone who could match him in power. If you had all the wisdom, if you could work, Exodus chapter 11, don't turn it right now, but when you get the chance to read it, the, 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 the beginning of the fall of humanity is in chapter 3. When it reaches its highest point, you read it in chapter 11, when all of these who were scattered throughout the world, they said, what? If he won't give us a place of our own, we'll build it. If he won't give us a name, we'll make it for ourselves. What well, things he gives to Abraham in chapter 12 that Abraham doesn't have to do and cannot do, and God gives it to him. But he won't let these fellas have all that speech. He said, I won't let them do it, all that power. I won't let them do it because if I let them do it, there's no stopping them. You think the world is bad right now? God said in First in Thessalonians 1.11, if I didn't put a stop to this, there would be no ending. Who knows? The world right now is one bad place. God put a stop to it. Not simply as punishment, but to keep humankind from obliteration in the wrong shape and form, contrary to his eternal purposes. Here in 1 Corinthians 11, he's saying, Paul, God by Paul is saying, if you were uh, omnipotent, if you were omniscient, if you were omniscient, that and the other, if you could do anything, if you were a lover of, of, uh, of, of your, your, your pride in yourself, if you wanted, uh, you, you, you did all this, you give all this and everybody, oh, how wonderful he is. If you're seeking 
if you're seeking uh, the words, you know the words, if you're seeking all of that, if all of that is going on, all your power, all your knowledge, all your speaking in this and all and that, not, 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 not worth that. It's worse than not worth that. That's only in one case. It doesn't make you anything. You're empty. Yeah. And then it gets worse than that as it goes on. But he does go on in First uh, First Thessalonians or First Corinthians eleven. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. It, yes. It, it, yes. It's eleven. Uh, no. Uh, thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, you corrected me right. It's thirteen. All right. He he says uh, in First Corinthians thirteen. I'm going to be done as soon as I can. Right. Uh, I don't know where I'm, I don't know how long I've been going. I'm going to quit as soon as I make it. Uh, First Corinthians thirteen. Th 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 this is maybe uh, the, I don't know if it's the most useful part of what I've been wrestling with. Um, uh, First Corinthians uh, thirteen um, and uh, make it verse three. Uh, make it no. Make it verse four. Uh, love. Uh, so, uh, suffereth long and is kind. Um, uh, yeah, okay, I'm doing all right. Um, you want verse three, Jim? Verse three. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah okay. I'll start again with three. Although I um, bestow all my goods to, to feed the poor, though I am my body to be burned and uh, 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 have not uh, if I have not love, thank you. Um, it profits me nothing. Charity is introduced love now, right? Um, love uh, suffereth long and is kind. Uh, love cherishes, uh, uh, envieth not, uh, all of that. There's a description here, of course, of what is going on to some degree at, 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 uh, at, uh, at, uh, at Corinth. And um, all of that, um, the charity suffers long, in, uh, verse 5, but uh, 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 it, it, doesn't, it doesn't behave itself unseemly, um, seeth not, uh, seeketh not her own, and uh, non, uh, not easily uh, provoked, uh, thinking no evil. Uh, the joy uh, so rejoices not an iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Um, bereaved, 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 all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Yeah. Charity, love never fails. Uh, and as it never stops, fails doesn't, he does not mean uh, fail here. He doesn't mean uh, love can try and, and, and the other person won't have it. That's not what he's saying. What, uh, never fails means like like water in a, in a, in a dead uh, river where, where it loses all of its water and it fails. It's what Christ said to Peter. Uh, you know, don't let your faith uh, fail. I mean, don't let it vanish, don't let it end, there's no more of it. He said, faith never stops, it keeps on having a shot, it never quits. Um, not that it, whatever it wants, it gets. That, that, that's not true, of course. Uh, um, or then, then, verse eight, Charlie never fails, verse nine, um, uh, uh, um, verse nine. But we know in part, and we prophesy in part. I, I need to say this: when you hear him say "in part, in part, in part, in part," it sounds like he's talking about the amount, the amount of knowledge. He's not 
trust me just for the minute, but expect uh, what, what, what happens after a while. When he says, um, for uh, we see through a glass, a mirror, uh, verse 12, darkly, but then face to face, I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now uh, 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 abideth uh, faith, hope, charity, love, these three, but the greatest of these is, uh, is, is love. He says, these guys got all the gifts. That's First Corinthians 7. They've got all these gifts. They're loaded down. He said, if you had them all, if you had all the knowledge, if, if you were like God, you were, the, the words uh, for them, okay? If you were like that, if you had all the power to say everything to get down and die and not when you wanted it done, when you knew all the answers, when you had all the wisdom, if you were God for pity's sake, we're back to the book of Genesis. And he's telling these Corinthians who are exulting on the things and the gifts that they've got, God-given gifts, incidentally. He says, if you had those and multiplied them to the height of God, wouldn't be worth that. You'd just be bellowing and sounding and blowing trumpets and all the rest of it. If you were looking for a heroine, Jesus said to a group of preacher guys, uh, in the book of Matthew, uh, John chapter 6, uh, how can you believe in me? How can you seek the honor of God when you seek the honor of man? Peter will say, uh, for John will say in 1 John, uh, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, for all that is in the world is the lust of the, we turn the word lust there into sexual, it's not sexual. The lust is the, this, this, this wanting everything, anything. He says, um, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, for all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, uh, the, the pride of life, and all these things, he said, in all of the world and in all of these things, there's no love, no love, no love of the Father. This is what's happening in First Corinthians here. And Paul, and Paul uh, has said to them, if you had all the things and you didn't have love, you know what happens. But then he says this, at best, you see those uh -huh those gifts at best it's part it's part it's this and that but remember that he has already said at the beginning if you had all the answers if you had all the 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 the, the, the whatever i'm supposed to say if you've got it all if there's no question, you can't answer. If you had a million Bibles, you can quote them back and front. Look, look, if you had a, as much knowledge as God, you'd be nothing. So when he talks about, we know in part, I mean, this in part, the other part, he's not talking about how much. He's talking about the, uh, kind of knowledge and what kind of knowledge is he talking about you can have all the knowledge and what does paul say it is not that you would still know in part he's using he's using the language of little or nothing uh, you know you, you don't have a lot but he said, when the perfect is come, when what is come? When love becomes the center and the drive of you, rather than what you're doing with one another and all the rest of it, you then, 
you then turn from the, the, the mirror that, that's all screwed up and you see him face to face. The whole issue is about mankind, humanity becoming powerful, having knowledge, having wisdom, having this, that, and the other. But, but, that's what was introduced into the world by humankind when evil said to them, you can know everything, you know what's great and powerful and this, that, and the other. If you eat uh, fruit, uh, God warned them against it. Don't eat that fruit. It's not a threat. It's not a threat. It's a warning. If you eat that, you die. If you eat that, you die. And they ate. And they got knowledge that was corrupted, such as they got was corrupted. But the warning, the warning don't eat, was not meant to bring death, Paul says in Romans chapter 5, speaking of himself as speaking of himself as representative of humankind. He is, he is, uh, what's the name of the first man? He is the... Who was a first firstborn? Uh, you you want to know who who uh, Adam? Who? First Adam. Adam, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you, Marianne. Uh, you were right, of course. Uh, uh, my question wasn't good. Um, Adam, uh, I I don't know where I'm going. Adam, uh, Adam was the first one, and he was alive, and then God gave a law. And because of the law, he died. Paul says that in Romans 5. He's representing himself as humankind, the world, like right in the beginning. These fellows that get all the knowledge and all the smarts and this, that, and the other, because they're loveless. They are corrupted. And Paul says in Romans 5, that law, that was given was not unto death, but to life. He was trying to tell them, you lose life if you do that. But what is it that they did? It wasn't just eat fruit. It was an absolute, uh, some big word, against God. They wanted to be God's opponent. It wasn't just an act of eating fruit. He, he told them, do that and you'll be God. And that's what they went for. And they went against God in the eating of the fruit that would bring them, he promised, knowledge. You see all the knowledge? And that's what Paul's talking about all the way through here. You see the knowledge, the only knowledge there is that's real knowledge. It's how God knows us. He says, as he closes right that section that I'm fumbling with, he says, when, they, the, when the, 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 the perfect is come, it, uh, the, the, the word perfect there, uh, it doesn't mean sinless. You know, but it, it's the word that means fullness, fully equipped, the whole story. You, you've gotten right to where uh, you need to be with it. He said, when the perfect is come, the part will be destroyed. This is in the text. The, 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 the part will vanish. Then, notice what he says. Then. He doesn't say, then you will know everything. 
he has already said to know everything wouldn't make yet that worth. He's saying when the perfect has come and becomes how you work with and think, the part is done away. Well, I get a glimpse, I get a glimpse, I get that, I get that. He said, the reason you get a glimpse is because you don't love, because you don't know. But when the perfect enters and you become like the God who created Adam and Eve and gave them all of this stuff, and gave them all of that, the one they attacked in order to have knowledge. When you stop that, taking the knowledge that was corrupted when it came in, and the real deal comes to you, then you turn from the shady mirror, and you turn and see him face to face. And he says, then you will know even as you have been known. Even as is an adverb of, of manner, not a knob, not a, whatever I'm supposed to say, of a mind. It's got nothing to do with a mind. Do you know what he's telling these people? All your knowledge, all your answers, all your this, all your that, all the other. It's not worth anything unless you love the way God loves you. But God's loving you is the way he knows you. And that's how you're known to him. You're not known until you understand that you are known by how God views you. You need to read when you get a chance, and uh, if you haven't had enough of this, you need to read chapter six when the time comes. It, love is the end of the whole issue. Jesus, when asked, what's the greatest commandment? You know what he said. First, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. The Matthew record of it says, on these two commandments, the entire uh, law of God hangs. When he says two commandments, he does mean commandments, but not commandments the way we usually Use the stuff. This is the order from God. It, it, his commandments are not threats or that, this, that, and the other. It's do this. This is, this is the greatest commandment is a loving act of God. And then, and then love your neighbor as yourself. And Paul, on these two commandments, the law, all the law hangs. And then he goes to, uh, I, I'm forgetting the, the chapter. I, I even forget the book. But here's what it says, and you'll know it. Paul follows the Lord Jesus in this matter. And he says, oh, no man anything, but to love one another. For love is the fulfillment of the law. For if there is a, this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not commit murder, you shall not commit uh, uh, false witness, you shall not, you shall not, you shall not. And if there is any other commandment, he says, all the commandments, he's following Jesus Christ to the core. And he's saying all of the commandments, he said, then says, are filled in one word. Love your neighbor as yourself. And why is that so? 
he says, because love means no evil to its neighbor or the, the, whoever it is. You know, why, why, why is love the number one issue? Because it's how God knows us. Come to know God. The first, uh, the chapter six, I, I think First Corinthians, where 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 he says that uh, those who uh, say they know things, they know nothing yet as they ought to know, but he who loves knows God. And then John, God is love. And if you know God, you know love. And if you know love, you know God. He doesn't mean that God's made out of love. He means that this being was center of him altogether is love. And love makes getting all the answers, spending all my time, scribbling all the little books I might scribble, speaking and preaching and, and all of that stuff. It's, it's only something if it arises out of glorifying God, glorifying God, doing his will, seeking, not flawlessly as Jesus did. That's not possible. No, if the love of God is the driving thing, though you make mistakes and you sin and all the rest of it, yet you embrace the God who loves yeah